everyone. Um, I'm Emily from GoWP. If you don't already know me, uh, welcome to today's webinar with Mike Demo Demopoulos on increasing form conversions and protecting your information. Really quick, I just want to say a couple words about GoWP in case anyone watching is not familiar with us. At GoWP, we are a team that is devoted to helping agencies grow by providing exceptional outsourced WordPress services. Um, agencies that partner with GoWP are able to focus on the low touch, high value work that helps them grow because they can depend on GoWP to take care of the high touch, low value work that disrupts their day. So that's things like <clears throat> um, website maintenance, uh, never ending content edit requests that come in from clients at all times of the day and night, our 24 7 team, 24 7 team takes care of those for you and it's all white labeled so it all appears as though everything's being done by your team. Um, so if you have any questions about partnering with GoWP or how our services can help your agency grow, feel free to reach out. Um, you can email me, emily at gowp.com, and send me a message in the, in the chat here, uh, send me a message on Facebook, whatever you prefer, reach out. Um, I also wanted to tell you about our Facebook group for those of you who are watching here in the Zoom call and may not be a member yet. It is the GoWP Niche Agency Owners Facebook group. Uh, this is a community of agency professionals who either already serve a niche market or would like to niche down. Uh, and we are broadcasting in this webinar live in the group right now. And the webinar will also be available there afterward to watch. So I'll put a link to that in the chat in just a minute. And for those of you who are already watching the Facebook group, so happy to have you here. Um, we're excited to get started. A few notes regarding the webinar. I'm gonna watch the chat both here in the Zoom uh, room and also in the Niche Agency Owners Facebook group. So if you have questions, throw them out. Um, I'll get them to Mike, no problem. Uh, we've already done a test of the chat in Zoom. If anyone's, I see and people are watching on Facebook. So there we go, everything's working. Um, all right, so let's get to why we're here today. Mike and Forms. Uh, Mike is the lead handshaker at Web Ventures IO. Uh, he's a lover of open source first specific tools later. Mike is the, as I said, the lead handshaker of Web Ventures IO. And <clears throat> believing there are too many mics in the world, he prefers to go by demo. Uh, he speaks at Ignite conferences, meetups, WordCamps, Joomla events, more, everything, anything you can think of. Mike is speaking at it. A lot of you have probably seen him speak before. I know I have, um, and he spent years building a strong client base in the financial and insurance industries. Um, a little bonus tip here, you can ask Mike, or ask Demo, I'm sorry, what his favorite tiki bar is on Twitter, at MP Mike. So, hey Mike, welcome. Hey, thanks Emily. Thank you so much for that wonderful intro. Hello to everyone on the InfoWebs. I'm gonna share my screen in just a minute, but I wanted to say such a pleasure to be with you today. Um, Hopefully, if you saw my talk this weekend at WordCamp LA, I didn't scare you off too much. So welcome back. And if um, you haven't heard of one of my talks, it's okay. You can leave the Zoom. It's, I won't be offended. It's not that scary though. But so we're going to get it. We're talking about forms today. So let me share my screen. And there we go. So uh, we, it's all about increasing form conversions and protecting your information. Real quick, a little bit of housekeeping before we go too far. I am Mike Demo. This is my fursona. Um, I am the evangelist at BoldGrid, which makes a bunch of WordPress plugins. One of them is a page builder. And we also have W3 Total Cache is a BoldGrid plugin. We acquired that recently. Web Ventures acquires WordPress plugins. And I'm the lead handshaker for Web Ventures. You think you have it tough um, in the COVID space, um, but I literally have my HR title as lead hand shaker and I have to, you know, pivot. So we're doing the best that we can. Um, my Twitter is at MP Mike. My emails are there, my LinkedIn, Facebook, and my website's there. If you wish to engage with me um, during the event, after the event, whatever's going on, um, I'd love to connect with you. So we are going to talk about forms, but real quick, I wanna talk about a giveaway. I love the game Pandemic, and I find it very timely that we're in the middle of a pandemic with COVID-19. So if you wanna play Pandemic at home, the board game, not the COVID edition, um, we're gonna give away a copy of Pandemic on the digital platform of your choice 
at the end of the webinar. You have to stay on Facebook or Zoom and Emily will pick somebody at random to win a copy of Pandemic, um, the digital copy on the platform of your choice. So please uh, stay uh, connected with that. And I'll add on there, just if you are watching in the Facebook group, make sure you let me know by commenting because I can't see everybody who's watching. So make sure you comment and say, hey, I'm here, I'm watching, and, and we'll make sure you're, you're entered as well. Yes, and then you can play a pandemic at home while social distancing. Cool, so let's talk about forms. Everybody loves forms, right? It's one of the probably the most popular WordPress plugin types that gets installed across all of the WordPress sites out there. There are so many different ways that we use forms. You got conditional logic forms, you have contact forms. So let's go over some of the use cases on all the different ways people are using forms on their WordPress site or on their CMS site in general. Uh, you know, they use them for uh, documents, onboarding, legal, legal things. I've seen forms for contracts. You know, I've seen conditional logic forms done for contracts. And I don't mean necessarily things like eSign or any of those like eSigning tools that exist. I mean, I've seen WordPress forms be used for insurance applications with conditional logic, with, you know, affili affiliate agreements, uh, whatever it happens to be, you know, people are using WordPress forms for that. They're using it for contact forms, just basic contact forms. Hey, find out more about our company, contact us, um, inquire about our service, pre-sales forms, all the different ways that people communicate. That usually happens through a form in, when people are reaching out and, fill, and communicating on a WordPress site. It's very rare that you'll click a link and it opens up an email client. It's usually through a form. You have um, forms for support. People need help with support. And a lot of that doesn't happen with a support center sometimes. Sometimes it happens just with a form. And sometimes a form might connect to something like Help Scout or Zendesk or something like that, but they're collecting the information on, hey, you're having trouble with our product or service. We want to help you. How do we find out more information about your problem? Please fill out this form. And there is Job applications, so many job applications I've seen on WordPress forms. Upload your resume, upload your documents. I've seen onboarding employment forms, which are asking people to upload their driver's license or their passport or their social security card that are being done in WordPress forms. And all of this data is happening on WordPress because forms are amazing. You can allow them to create basically many applications. And a lot of them are drag and drop. You don't have to be a developer to create multi-step conditional logic forms. I've made forms for insurance applications, mutual funds, dental insurance companies. And I've had to deal with the, you know, the negative side of forms, which is what we're here to talk about today. And last but not least, transactional mini shopping carts, purchase a product. Maybe you don't need a full shopping cart, something uh, like uh, WooCommerce or whatever. A lot of forms have payment gateways that you can use PayPal or um, um, any of the other payment um, providers uh, that happen to exist. And you can just connect that with your form provider, you know, uh, and have like a mini calculation form, if, let's say a t-shirt order form, or maybe a donation form or whatever you happen to do. There are a lot of transactions also happening on forms. Well, let's talk about PPI. Now, this is a, def a legal definition for the US and to be clear, I am not an attorney. Please talk to your own counsel. But according to uh, Law Insider, personal Protected personal information means specific individual facts that unless segregated would otherwise be in a submitted document to identify a person submitting that document or another person beyond that person's name or to identify the uh, financial activities of either which the court is allowed or required by law to keep confidential. So that's a really long phrase. Basically, if it's a piece of data that could be used to identify someone, it's basically considered PPI. I first came across PPI when I was working in the banking sector. I made hundreds and hundreds of bank websites on Joomla. Yes, Joomla, just, you know, let's don't leave yet. It's a CMS like everything else. I'm not married to a CMS. I'm in an open source relationship. And yes, Robert, I did steal that from Josuke Dunbar, but with permission, um, I forked it. And uh, 
we always, and we had to deal with a lot of PPI there. And then the insurance space, a lot of PPI there. I did a lot of healthcare um, um, documents and WordPress work. Um, I've done, I've built hundreds of hospital intranets on WordPress and there's a lot of PPI there. And you're thinking, well, that's fine for you, but I don't build bank websites and I don't deal with a hospital and I, you know, don't deal with any of that. And plus my forms are secure. Well, maybe, but let's talk about it. Let's first talk about databases and how WordPress works. WordPress works on a LAMP stack, which stands for Linux, Apache, MySQL, PHP. All of the three major open source uh, CMSs run off PHP and by definition, they use a LAMP stack. And yes, you can also use MF, Microsoft SQL instead of MySQL, but 99% of all WordPress sites use MySQL. So, uh, MySQL is the database. You know, Linux is the operating system. Um, PHP is the programming language. And MySQL is the database. And the database is where everything gets stored that isn't a file. So you, there's two pieces to a WordPress site. You've got the files, things like the images, CSS, JavaScript. And then you got the database, which is really where the content manager comes into play. You've got your users, you've got your pages, you've got your posts, you've got your comments. All of the data that you're, you're interacting with when you're using WordPress lives in your MySQL database. And we're gonna talk about how that happens to look in the form world. Fun fact about databases is um, they are used on tons of applications and not just for web applications. In fact, the first modern database the first modern database was used on the Apollo project to track all components on the Saturn V rocket. After the Apollo 13 disaster, they queried the database and saw that the oxygen tank that ruptured was dropped on the floor, but later passed inspection. So databases have been in use in for a very long time. That's just a fun little uh, database fact. Now that database wasn't SQL, but um, the databases had been around for a long time. So we know how databases work. So how do databases work with form data? We have all these form entries and where do they live? How do people access um, their form entries. Well, most of the form entries, you can access it a couple different ways. Maybe you'll get emailed when a form is submitted to you. Maybe you'll just go to an entries tab on your plugin and you can just download them to Excel or CSV or whatever you want, or you can just view them inside of your browser inside of the WP admin. But what lives in the database for the most popular form plugins? Well, we're gonna go through quite a few of them and I'm just gonna show you some quick examples. So Caldera Forms, um, uh, which is made by the wonderful Josh Pollock, um, which is now part of the Ninja Forms family, they um, store their stuff in the database in plain text. Um, you're gonna see a theme here, by the way, um, and it uses a form entry values um, table. And you can see I have a John Doe test here, and you know, so that's how Caldera Forms looks in the database. If you had access to that database via PHP My Admin, or maybe you were a bad actor and you had access to the database in a way that wasn't intended for you to have access. Maybe you accidentally made the database open to the rest of the internet. Maybe somebody hacked your site and downloaded the database. But there's a reason why the passwords are salted and hashed in WordPress so that even if the database is exposed, that confidential information is not exposed. But all the form information on most every WordPress form is just stored in plain text in the database. So Caldera Forms is this is one example of how that looks. Um, Contact Form 7 actually doesn't for, store anything in the database. It relies on email to send that data. Now, this has good and bad um, um, parts of it. You know, email is inherently insecure in itself. But Contact Form 7 does recommend another plugin called Flamingo if you would like to be able to access your entries for later retrieval inside your WP admin. And Flamingo stores it in the post meta table, not even their own table. And again, it is uh, in plain text, as you can see here with my John Doe example um, for my contact form seven test. 
Uh, WS Forms, another great uh, new form. They use their own table. It's a submit meta table. And as you can see here, um, the email is there. I did uh, kind of um, blur it out because I actually had to use my own email because they make they have a protection that you can't use any fake emails when um, your users are submitting their forms as a spam protection, which is a great feature. Um, but again, plain text available. Uh, Ninja Forms, very popular. They use uh, the post meta table um, inside of WordPress. Same thing, fields available here. Uh, formidable. They use their own um, um, item meta table and plain text, always you know available as well. You're starting to see a theme here. Uh, and Gravity Forms, they use uh, their own entry meta table. Um, in this case, I had a one field form with just the name, just to test it out. You know, plain text as well. And WeForms, one of our products, we do the same thing, right? Um, we have our own uh, table called Entry Meta, and the stuff is there in plain text. So if I'm ending on ours and saying we are the same as everyone else, there must be a reason for that. First of all, don't blame the form plugins. We're just using them wrong. We're all using these form plugins wrong. It's yeah, and I know what you're thinking. Well, my day, I don't collect anything that that's protect that that's that special. Go back to PPI. If that information was leaked, would that not would that be a good thing or a bad thing? Would you have to go to a client and be embarrassed that uh, their entries um, got exposed? Would the client be upset about that? And you just saying, well, it's not technically PPI is not really going to make them happier. They're going to be like, well, I expected you as my developer to make sure my site was safe and the P and my customer's data was safe. Now, some of these form plugins, they, they're smart enough to know, hey, if you're taking payment, we're not going to store any of that payment data because that's definitely something that we don't even want in the WordPress database. And they'll do a direct connection to Stripe or PayPal or whatever the case may be and just send back the, um, the API calls. But what about all the other stuff? What about all the fields that we're making? What about all these complex form applications that we're doing beyond just a contact form? And I would even argue a contact form if you have an email and a phone number or even just a phone number, that phone number can make it get, can get tied to a person. And I don't want that my data being exposed if I'm interacting with you. And I know your clients don't want their customers' data being exposed. But don't take my word for it. Ninja Forms has a wonderful article about this. These are some quotes I pulled out of it. Security is your responsibility. Email is extremely insecure and your form data is only as secure as your server. This is their fancy way of saying, not my circus, not my monkeys. Now, Ninja Forms is a great plugin. They, it, a lot of people use it. Millions of sites run on Ninja Forms. This isn't any one specific form problem. It's the way that WordPress databases are inherently designed and the way that the plugins work with them. So, but let's talk about security because security on your server is important. Um, so let's talk about that. This is what I call the responsible web ownership pyramid. It starts at the bottom with a reliable WordPress host. Check out, you know, so find a good WordPress host. Maybe if you have a local WordCamp, check out their sponsors, talk to their hosts. You know, we all know the big names like InMotion Hosting, Bluehost, um, WP Engine, Flywheel, uh, um, Kingsta, um, Convezio, um, Stratic, etc. Um, Pantheon. Find a good host that you trust. Um, maybe a managed WordPress hosting offering, which does some of the stuff on this pyramid for you, would be appropriate. Now, managed WordPress hosting sometimes costs more than shared hosting. Maybe you want to run your own server. If you want to run your own server, definitely make sure you know how to manage the updates on the server so that you make sure your server is secure. So you got your good hosting. Good. Check. Done. Uh, you want to have backups. You want to have offsite backups. Use an offsite backup tool such as Total Upkeep, Akiba, Backup Buddy, whatever you want to use. And make sure it lives somewhere not on the web server, either on your local computer or in um, OneDrive or um, whatever the case uh, may happen to be. Um, make sure it lives offsite. And then test your backups. Make sure you test your backups. An untested backup is basically useless because if that site were to get deleted today, and I've seen hosting companies go belly up and all of their stable of websites disappear overnight, um, you wanna make sure that backup will work. 
have an SSL certificate. You can get a lot of free, most hosts offer free SSL through Let's Encrypt. I am personally not a fan of Let's Encrypt. Now, it's not for any security reason um, of the Let's Encrypt certificate itself. An SSL certificate, for the most part, is an SSL certificate. I like the service that you get with a paid SSL. I like how uh, it lasts for a year versus six months. And in certain circumstances, especially if it's a non-public facing website, Let's Encrypt might not be able to communicate with the server to the validate the ownership. And then uh, that website might have that uh, certificate expire. I've seen, I've seen hundreds of internet sites um, suddenly give you Let's Encrypt errors because their sites were no longer um, exposed to the internet. Now, again, the developers should have known better, but I prefer paying 25 bucks, having a certificate that I pick. Plus, in general, older browsers do recognize the paid SSLs better than Let's Encrypt. Now, we're talking about less than like 3% or 5% of the, uh, of the people. But if you have a high traffic site, it might make the difference of your conversion. Excuse me, apparently my Alexa is beeping at me. Um, next, you wanna have a web application firewall. Now this can come in basically two flavors, something that runs on the DNS layer, such as secure your site lock, which all the traffic flows through it and blocks all the bad stuff before hitting your web server. Or you can use a plugin such as WordFence, which lives on your WordPress site, which allow, which doesn't allow people to do any backdoors that you might be able to do with a DNS provider, although you can fix that with HT access rules. I really recommend everyone have some sort of security application on their site. Don't say the site's not going to happen to me. I'm not going to get hacked. I make a puppy blog. Nobody doesn't like puppies. Well, it can happen. Trust me on that. And so a lot of these tools have free tiers. So, you know, check them out. Um, for any email that you're doing, like, you know, confirmations on the form submissions, maybe getting notified when a form is submitted, I really recommend you use a hosted SMTP service. There's an amazing plugin called WP Mail SMTP, which makes this easy. You can connect to your SMTP provider of choice. Um, they, they have one click configuration with like a dozen of them. And this makes the deliverability higher, which is good if you are using mission critical forms. And also make sure that you're not relying on PHP Mail which is even more insecure and it doesn't have the DKIM and the other email uh, DNS signatures to tell the receiver this mail is who I say this mail is from, which if you're doing like a confirmation, if somebody fills out an order form or something, you wanna make sure that mail gets there. Then you wanna have encryption. You wanna make sure encryption on any protected information is there. And in this case, we're talking about forms. You wanna make sure the form submission data is encrypted and we're gonna get there. We'll talk about that in just a second. There are three ways you can do that with either a SaaS solution manually or with plugins. Uh, you also wanna make sure your WordPress and all the themes and plugins are up to date. Uh, maybe your uh, host will do this automatically if you have a managed host, or you can use a tool like Watchful, My Sites Guru, or Managed WP to automatically back up and update your sites on a nightly, weekly, monthly basis, whatever schedule you have for your clients. Or of course, use a service like GoWP, which can do this on your behalf. And then last, but certainly not least, I recommend two-factor authentication for all your WordPress sites. This will make sure that only the people that are interacting with the WP admin are people that are supposed to. You're gonna do this with things like Google Authenticator or text message authentication. But I prefer YubiKey, which is a physical hardware token that you have to have to be able um, to gain access to that site. Now, um, I know what you're thinking because I've heard it all. I've had hundreds of banks on YubiKeys and they all say, well, what happens if my YubiKey gets lost, stolen, broken? Well, you might wanna have a couple of people in the organization with the key and you both have access so you can let the other one in, but you can always print out some emergency keys that I recommend keep in a safe deposit box or a fireproof box um, that's locked, that's unidentified so that if for some reason you lose your physical key, you can still gain access. Uh, my wife and I have access to each other's resources on our YubiKeys. So if one of our keys gets stolen, the other one can get access to it and then authorize the new key on that as well. Um, so that is the web responsible web ownership pyramid. And we're going to dive into the encryption thing, specifically how it relates to forms. Ways to encrypt your form data. You can do a SaaS. You can use a SaaS form provider such as Jotform or Formstack. This is what I used when I did all the banking work. 
Um, it is automatically HIPAA compliant, meets banking standards, PCI compliant, has all the certifications that you need. But the costs are really high, medium to very high cost. But you can usually get a single form online in about an hour, but you do have to build the form from scratch again, then you embed it in with their WordPress plugin. You can find a profession, but let's say, uh, you can find a professional's help. Well, maybe you have a very specific use case and you just want to be able to encrypt your data um, from your form and maybe other parts of your WordPress site a very specific way. Find a professional that can help you. Maybe go to Codable, uh, maybe um, check out the uh, GoWP, um, you know, resident developer program on product that they just launched. The problem with this is the project's probably gonna at least take a couple of weeks, probably closer to a month, and you have to do a lot of testing. And the cost is gonna be very high in comparison to the rest of these problems. And then you can, or you can use a plugin. Let's say I already got my form provider that I wanna use. I know what plugin I wanna use. And I just want my stuff to be secure because I don't want that data to be out there if, or more, just think about it, when that database gets exposed. You don't want to have to have that call to your client and you definitely don't want that call, client to have to make the call to their customers. Um, that does all the work for you to make sure the data is safe. Um, ease of use, usually get online in under 30 minutes and the cost is free to low. So we're gonna take a closer look at some of these plugins. So there are four options that I found that's being decently used right now in the WordPress space. Um, the first one is Fortress DB, which is an official partner of WeForms. They also have Form um, Forminator support. Um, um, and they have developer docs if you want to connect it to a custom application or to a different form provider. They are GDPR compliant because they allow you to choose your data center location, um, like US, Europe, et cetera, Canada. Um, and they have Gutenberg support. So if you wanted to take your form data and display it on the front end with charts and graphs, they do some of that stuff for you. Um, it's been tested on, you know, over a, 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 da a data set that has millions of rows and it's super fast. Um, if you use Gravity Forms, you can use Plugin Owl. They have a third party tool um, called Encrypted Fields by Plugin Owl. It's not recommended by Gravity. It's not officially supported by Gravity Forms, but they are recommended on their website. Um, you kind of just, it just um, encrypts it locally, but you know, it's one of those code canning things where you have to pay extra for support and kind of hope for the best. Uh, Ninja Forms has a virtue Ninja Forms plugin extension. It's for Ninja Forms only. This complex is meant for developers. You need to have your own server where the data is going to live and you have to have the handshakes. And it's not officially supported by Ninja Forms, but they are linked from their website. It is probably the most complex form setup I've seen that is available. Um, and then the second most complicated, I would say, is the HIPAA compliant Web Forms plugin, which is its own Web Forms plug plugin already, but they have Caldera form support if that's the form provider you use. Um, they're primarily focused on US HIPAA compliance, which is a medical privacy um, law, and they have a US data center because that's what they're focused on. The developer actually lives in Baldwin, like 20 minutes from where I live, um, and they're not a formal partner of Caldera. All they are recommended but he, they are recommended by Josh at Caldera Forms. So to give an example of how this kind of looks is we're gonna go through the install path of WeForms with Fortress DB so you can see how this can kind of set up and how you'd interact with your data. So Fortress uh, database demo with WeForms, it's not a live demo because I am not silly. There's just gonna be some screenshots. So first you in Install your WeForms. There'll be a link to receive a special discount because we're a partner to get your account at Fortress DB. Fortress DB has free and paid plans. Um, if you use our link and decide to upgrade to paid in the future, you still get the discount. And again, you can still use our link to get the discount even if you use a different form provider that Fortress DB supports. So then you get that. Then you install Fortress DB. You log in or you to your data center, choose your data center location like US, EU, et cetera. Inside of the form, in, um, inside, inside of WeForms, you just activate it under integrations, just toggle it on. And then it is, uh, um, and then it is active. My last slide, I might have saw the post-it note, didn't make it uh, in there, but, um, I saved that last night, sorry about that. And then all you basically need to do is you go down to Fortress DB 
And then that's where your form data is going to live. Because what happens is instead of the form data being saved in your MySQL database and WordPress, it is saved in the Fortress DB data center of the location that you choose. And a lot of countries require that their client's data is stored in certain locales. And this helps you become compliant depending on you know, what countries you're doing business with. And then you can view it just from inside the Fortress DB um, page here, export it as CSV, whatever you want to do, instead of looking at the, the entries page inside uh, WeForms. You can still use all the other um, features of the form provider, such as email notification, um, etc. but it will uh, live in there. Um, I also wanted to talk, uh, this, that's just a quick example of how you can easily get on board with uh, encryption on you know, some of the most popular form providers out there. I'm going to give some quick tips on some form conversion, uh, how you increase some form conversions, and then we'll get to some questions. So some quick form tips. First of all, have a privacy policy that's up to date. Use a service like Termageddon. Um, you know, Donata this weekend gave a wonderful talk called the three things all web professionals need to know about privacy. Um, I, there's a lot of links in this deck. The very last page, I'll give you a, a URL where you can download the deck with all the links so that you don't have to remember all of this. So I recommend Term get in or use your own if you have your own attorney. Just make sure it's up to date. Um, all things being equal, um, customers, when they see a privacy policy, will do business with the, the company that focuses on privacy first. And that also is true for encryption. You can say that all data in here is secured and you're not just hoping that nobody gets wrong access into the database. Think about this. Also, everybody at your web host has access to the database, um, you know, the, they can get access. And, you know, we've seen companies, not necessarily in the WordPress space, be bad actors and download private data. Uh, we've read lots of stories about, you know, companies accessing data that they're not supposed to. So if your data is encrypted, then you'll make sure that even if they get access to it, they won't be able to read any of the data, which is why I just think it's so important that all form data, for the most part, should honestly be encrypted and not just left a chance. Uh, conversational forms, uh, you know, it's a new way to display form data. You've probably seen those forms, which ask you one question at a time. It's very big, good UI, allows you to press like the keyboard shortcuts for the answers. Those are, you know, in, uh, making it easy for people to engage. Um, Space 10 says conversational forums from web forums into conversations, making it easy for developers and designers to engage with users in a more com compelling and conversational way. A lot of forum providers already have um, conversational add-ons or plugins, um, or you can just do it with you know, multi-page forms manually, depending on your tool that you're using. Uh, validate email before you put data onto your MailChimp list or your uh, constant contact list or whatever it is. Test your email for something like a Vidility or Zero Bounce. Vidility is what I use. Um, they used to be called Bright Verify. First of all, it's going to save you money. Um, the average email list has, has a 2% loss rate every month because emails die, they change, people move, uh, you know, leave companies or whatever. You don't want to be sending mail that might bounce back. It's going to help your reputation because if you... you depending on what provider you're using, you need to keep your bounce rate uh, below a certain amount and your spam rate below a certain amount. And the best way to do that is to take out all the junk. Um, if you, you know, have a list that you haven't emailed in a while, even if it's a customer list, run it through the tool. Sometimes it costs just one tenth of a penny per email. And we don't add anything to any of our lists without running it through one of these tools. Even if it's a real person, it's not gonna be on our marketing list. Um, just because we wanna make sure that we're having a very high good reputation list. Um, and then ask less, only to put the fields that you really think you need. A-B test different form links. And I gave a link to one of my talks about A-B testing for optimal conversion. Think about what data you really need to collect. I know it's tempting to put lots of questions into a form, but the more fields you put, the less likely people are going to finish it. Now, a lot of these forums have add-ons on the pro version that allow you to capture the data before they submit it so you can at least see partly completed forms and see people when they leave. But do you really need to know their phone number? If that is critical for your business, great. If it's not, leave off. And I know you can say, well, I can make it optional. Yeah, but if you're not using the data and you're likely not going to use it, don't ask it up front. Ask for the data that is important for them to complete the action. 
Now, the more invested that they are in your business, let's say it's a support form, asking more questions at the beginning is a little more forgiving because the user is looking for help. But if it's a pre-sales form or uh, you know they're not a customer yet and they haven't converted and they're giving you their money, you wanna make that experience as easy as possible for you to be able to engage with them. However, that works for your uh, user journey. Um, I'm gonna leave this last slide up when we do some questions. Some discounts here that's available for you. Um, if you wanna save 20% off all pro plans of WeForms, you can use code WP, uh, code GoWP, excuse me. Um, if you wanna save 33% off, all paid plans on Fortress DB, no matter which form provider you're using that they support, you can use the code WeForms33 per. Um, Elegant Marketplace has thousands of products, not just DB related. Uh, you can save 30% off all the products that you can add on to your cart there with the code GoWP. Um, Sprout Invoices is one of our plugins, allows you to send invoices to your clients and collect payments securely you can get a 55% discount off that. It's kind of similar to like QuickBooks Online or Sprout Invoice or uh, uh, FreshBooks, excuse me, um, with code GoWP. We have a podcast that's free, Tools Are Tools, available where all your favorite podcasts are sold, you know, iTunes, Amazon, Google Podcasts, Spotify, whatever. Um, and every week we talk about a different WordPress plugin and we interview that founder. And at weformspro.com slash GoWP, the bottom right square is where you can download these slides, links to all the discounts, links to all my socials, um, as well as some additional bonus resources and talks with some other uh, community members about this topic um, and related topics that you might find interesting. So with that, we got about 15 minutes left for questions. Uh, Emily, do you just wanna read them? Is that best? Yeah, we haven't, I haven't seen any come in actually. Um, we've had some comments. Oh. Uh, okay. people enjoying the presentation, giving you've given some great ideas for, for folks to use um, with their clients. So some comments like that. Um, Jamie, Jamie Hill over on Facebook was excited to get started. He said hi. And Ashish over on Facebook also says when he sees GoWP go live on Facebook, he says, I'm in. So <laughs> we've had quite a few positive comments, but not a lot of questions. So if anyone has okay. questions, now's the time. Um, demo, I thought that was a fantastic presentation. Um, lots of technical stuff in there, like packed with information. And somehow I was laughing like multiple times throughout it. So that was, well, you know, that was fun. I, looks aren't everything. I, I do my best. <laughs> you did a great job. I really, I really enjoyed it. And I, I learned a lot. Um, so it was, it was really informative for yeah. me. And what's cool is people can go to like the, the link weformspro.com slash go to BP, download the slides if they wanted to like dig into any of the database locations a little bit more closely for their form provider of choice. I know I didn't hit every WordPress form, but I hit the most popular ones by a wide margin just to kind of show it's not a specific tool issue. It's just the way databases work in WordPress because I didn't want anyone feeling like I was shaming any one form plugin because they all do great things, but a little bit differently. But at the end of the day, they all have the same, you know, Achilles heel, which, you know, we're hoping to fix with our, inter our partnership with Fortress DB. And obviously some of them have other uh, partnerships with some other third party encryption tools as well. Yeah, absolutely. I thought that was great to kind of see behind the scenes on each of them and, and, and how they all how they all have great benefits, but also, yes, yeah, some, some things to keep an eye out for. Um, we got a question from Kevin. So are there any options for encrypting data on our own server that work with WordPress? Sure. So the there is a couple. Um, the one for uh, Ninja, let me find it. Yeah, here we go. So um, Gravity um, Plugin Owl um, does work on your own server. I am 95% sure. I haven't tested Plugin um, plug Owl, Gravity Forms Encrypted Fields. I was just reading about it, but this does work on your own server where these, the rest of these do work off there um, on separate servers. And the reason for that is twofold. Usually most of these solutions 
work off of third party servers because it all has to do with where the data needs to legally live. Depending on what country you live in, the data might need to live in a certain jurisdiction. So that might not be the same as your web server, especially if you're doing something with internalization. I know people are using Fortress DB with us in WeForms and they're like, there's like a US version that they might show their clients and like an EU version so that their client's data lives in the, you know, the restriction, you know, each of the jurisdictions correctly. Also, they usually are connected to something like AWS um, or Microsoft Azure which have all of these, and I know this from the banking world, they're very specific types of um, tests and certifications that different types of data need to have. We've all heard of PCI certification and HIPAA compliance, but there's all these different types, like there's different compliance for social security numbers, the different compliance for addresses, phone numbers, um, kids information, and they all have all of these very different, very, very heavy legally binding documents. And what's nice is those really, really large providers check all those boxes where your local web host probably doesn't because that's not their business. Their business is not is to provide WordPress websites. So um, you can always use uh, your own developer and roll your own solution, but you know, you're kind of, you'll be playing like cat and mouse. Like as the plugin gets updated, you might need to update your solution that you've built in house, et cetera. Um, which, you know, the, such as the, uh, your own, uh, um, developer um, product offering of something like Codable or, you know, whatever, however you want to figure it out. It, depending on, you know, how that's built, it might be a game of cat and mouse. And you're also hoping that whoever you're working with knows all the applicable security laws in their jurisdictions. And these all have different focuses. Like if you only do health data, you might want to probably look at HIPAA compliant web forms plugin because that's their focus. They don't do that. Their focus is HIPAA full stop. Um, and so then all these different providers have different focuses in different jurisdictions and countries that they focus on too. Um, although for the most part, if you cover um, the UK, EU, and US, you're covering most of the laws in the world. But again, check with your own counsel because I'm not an attorney. Yeah. <laughs> Good disclaimer there at the end. That's that's really interesting stuff though. And I'm, I think it just drives home like it's probably probably in most people's best interest and and also easiest to go with one of these um, plugins that's able to kind of cover all the bases for you, I suppose. Um, we did get one, one comment from Ashish over on Facebook. He said he liked that you raised the important point about people who have access to the hosting server also have access to form data. So that's something important for people to people to keep in keep in mind there. Um, and yeah, Kevin said, excellent summary of options and issues to consider. So great answer there, Demo. Um, another question from Shanta, does the encryption interfere with accessibility or does that just live on the kind of back end? I think is what she's asking. Um, it usually just lives on the back end because it's not visible to the front end. The, the, uh, to if your form is accessible and if your third party form provider is already accessible, the encryption is not going to affect that. What I don't know the answer of if um, the accessibility of the backend tools, like on the WP admin side, mm -hmm. I would have to do some testing on that. But on the front end, there's no change to accessibility because they're just interfacing with the same exact piece of content. It's just where that data is saving and how is it, and if it's being encrypted or not encrypted is just kind of, uh, is what's changing. So there's not any change to the front end user experience at all. Cool. I think we answered her question. So great. Um, fantastic. I don't see any other questions, but there's still time if you have them to put them out there. Um, let's go ahead and do the giveaway while we're yeah, waiting let's do to see it. if anyone has any more questions. So I'm, we're going to do, actually, we're going to double down on this. And, and Demo's giving away a game to, to anyone who's here watching right now. And then GoWP will also give give away a game for anyone um, who has registered. So we may be giving away a game to somebody who's not here yet, but we do appreciate that that you all registered for the event too. So let's see here. I, let me just check, double check my list here, cross check. Doors are closed, cabin secure. All right. Now I think I can share my screen. I'm gonna take down yep. this here. Yep. Um, I will be sending a follow-up email. So if you did not get any of those um, links there, we'll be sure to include that in the follow-up. So 
I think I've got my screen up and let's go ahead and see who the winner is. Jamie. All right, so that's Jamie Hill who's watching with us on Facebook. Um, congratulations, Jamie. We'll be reaching out to you uh, to get your address and all that and, and get, uh, get your copy of Pandemic that you can play the, the fun version of instead of just the real life version that we're all <laughs> stuck in. <laughs> um, okay, that, now let's do the second giveaway here. Let me share my screen again. Oops. Yeah, and Pandemic, instead of fighting diseases, you're fighting colored cubes, so. It's much yeah. more fun. I just, I played it last weekend with my family here and, and awesome. we love it, so. <laughs> It's a lot of, there's a lot, a lot of versions. Fun. There's a lot of versions of pandemic. There's like 45 different versions. Of yeah, pandemic. I found I found that out um, when I was putting this together and like getting a link to it. And I didn't, there's I even didn't one that. where you can play as the disease if you're so inclined. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check that one out. Okay, so these are all of our registrants. Maybe someone who's watching now, maybe not. Hopefully. I, Mark. I don't okay. think this person is on the call at the moment, Mark. No, he's not, but I will reach out to him and let him know that he won. <laughs> awesome. So thank you, everybody. Uh, it looks like I got a few more comments. Ed said, awesome job demo, very interesting stuff, super useful. Um, let's see, congratulations, Jamie. Aaron Ryan, <laughs> can Jamie win twice? <laughs> um, I don't know, I hadn't, I thought about that when I was putting these two prize wheels together, that that was, I was just hoping that wouldn't happen and it didn't, so we're all safe, so there we go. <laughs> I uh, once uh, at the Jimla World Conference, I uh, at the very end, I was giving away two prizes. So um, one was with everybody there, and then one was just people that visited a sponsor's booth. And the same person won the bit, won the PlayStation VR, which was the everyone group, and a TV from GoDaddy. Oh um, back to back and they everyone thought I was like paid off and I'm like I swear I am was not paid <laughs> off so yeah I've, and that was like hundreds of people were at that conference it was uh ironically it was four years ago it was over the election um in Vancouver as I remember because we were in the same complex as the Department of Immigration of Canada and after the election they had a sign on the door that said office closed please go to our website for information oh my god <laughs> wow so, yeah. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, it's amazing that those things can happen. And there are like professional giveaway players too out there. Yeah, out they're there, called, yeah. yeah, they're called, yeah, they're called sweepers. Um, sweepers. Uh, <laughs> about 15 years ago, when I used to work at a hotel, we would always have an, a national sweepers convention. And yeah, the systems and processes for all of that people, you know, it's wow. a hobby that people like. So. There we go. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Demo. This is like really an awesome webinar. I learned a lot. I know that everyone watching um, has said that they've learned a lot as well. And I'll be sending out the follow-up email with the recording and all that information shortly so everyone can look forward to that. And once again, um, if you're not in our Facebook group already, you can go check it out over there. And this recording is always there immediately after we're done here. So thank you so much. And I'll see you all in the Facebook group.